welcome to another episode of What's the Point, the podcast that helps you find meaning, substance and fulfillment for your work and daily life. And today I am delighted to be joined by Mark Taylor. Hello, Mark. Please do give yourself an introduction. Hi, Danny. Good morning. Uh, lovely to see you. Um, yes, so, so I'm Mark Taylor. I am regional managing partner for RSM in the UK. So I currently oversee RSM Central Region. RSM is an audit, tax and consulting business. We're one of the top 10 county firms in the, in the UK. And these days we're about a 500 million turnover business. Thank you, Mark. And um, it's been a delight to get to know you over the last few years. And crucially, how brilliantly you lead with success, but with a real heart for the people um, in, and around, in and around you. So just really grateful to have got to know you over, over the last few years. So let's jump into our podcast. And Mark, let's go straight in. What would you say is the point of your life? Well, it's a big question to start with, Danny, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah, thank yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pardon? Thank you. Thank you for your kind words as well. Thank you. It's been great to get to know you too and, and, and uh, appreciate all the support that you've given to our business over the last few years. Um, so what's the point? I mean, for me, Danny, um, family is massively important to me. I've got two young sons who are now 10 and 7, and they are really uh, the focal point of, of my life, um, supporting them, um, trying to give them a great childhood, trying to give them experiences that will enrich them trying to give them opportunity, um, you know, more opportunity than perhaps I had at their age um, without spoiling them too much. I'm not, I'm not sure that's a, I'm not sure it's a balance. I always get completely right, to be honest, but I'm trying, you know, um, but uh, they're really at the center, I would say, in terms of, you know, my life and, and my purpose and what I'm, what I'm trying to achieve. Still got a long way to go in terms of their growing up. And that's a real, you know, that's a real point of focus for me in life. Wonderful, Mark. That's so so enriching to hear that. And and knowing you, I I I know and see the adventures that you create with them in in life. So it's it's so heartening heartening to to see. So within work and work and daily life, you know, we've been through, golly, a a, a turbulent to put it mildly for four years, and it keeps mm -hmm. it keeps coming. The turbulence keeps coming, but with, within, as I say, home and and daily life, what what and work sorry what trends are you seeing within people within people well yes I think you're absolutely right Danny I think I think the last few years have been um very turbulent haven't they uh I think we all you know we all recognize that and our, our business is a people business uh you know in our central region we have 5,000 of us in the UK and and, and uh, the offices that I look look after oversee there are about a thousand people based there um, and we've seen a lot happen. I think I think COVID, the separation of people from the workplace, the the influx of youngsters now into our business, school leavers and graduates who've had a very um, unusual experience in their in their education cycles compared to previous generations. We definitely see differences in them. More in, more instances of mental health, more anxiety in circumstances that. Um, perhaps we wouldn't have expected to see or haven't seen so much in the past. Um, that's been that's been quite revealing, and I think some of that is born out of the experiences. You sense that some of that is born out of the experiences that they've had or not had uh, in, in recent times. So, I think settling on new normal, new work patterns, really, um, you know, reaching a, an equilibrium with with hybrid work, support for people coming into the business who have different expectations of what work might look like compared to in the past because of some of the experiences they've had through the pandemic is something that we're still very much, very much grappling with as an organisation. And I know talking to other leaders in our sector, in professional services generally, it's a big challenge for sure. Yes, it's certainly is and you leading in amongst all of all of that you know what looks right for for people are they coming in are they not coming coming in what suits one person doesn't suit another with the mental health conundrums that you know we're, we're all we're all facing um 
in, in work and daily daily life, you know, and and the impact on the economy just keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming. So there's there's a real cobweb of emotion drama to to consistently wade through as as a leader. So within that, and and then you know, being being a family man as as you are, Mark, with a wife and 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 children and a social life to to keep buoyant. What strong steps for you, Mark, have have you got? that you take for yourself as in habits that you have or, or, or things that you do on a daily basis to keep your strength in amongst all of this? Um, yes, uh, I think, what would I point to, Danny? I think, I think discipline. I've always been quite a disciplined person, I would say, in, in, in life generally. You know, I always worked hard at school and, and, and that's kind of followed me through life. And I think I do recognise the importance of having routines that you can try to stick to in life. I mean, I'm not always, I'm by no means perfect and by no means do I achieve all the, you know, things I'd like to achieve in terms of the routines I've got in life. But I do try to, I do try to keep some rhythms and some, um, some process around health. I think, I think health is so crucial. Um, and, you know, with, without health, it's, you know, it, it undermines so much else in life, doesn't it? So I um, had a great medical actually a couple of years ago um with a uh, with Booper. um and you know we've probably you know lots of people who, who listen to the podcast no doubt have had medicals in the past and sometimes you know i think we're all guilty perhaps of you know you listen and you nod in the right places and then you go back to doing exactly what you did before um but i took two pieces of really good advice from 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 the doctor i met that day and he said to me you know he asked me about my lifestyle he asked me about uh, what i did for a living and and he said to me um, you know, two things, you know, you spend an awful lot of time sitting down, you spend a lot of time behind a desk, you spend a lot of time not moving very much. Um, I suggest you think seriously about fasting because uh, you, um, you don't need all the calories that you're putting into your body at breakfast time. You could easily go 16 hours and fast overnight because you're eating an evening meal, your body's storing lots of um, energy reserves that you're not particularly eating into and you're going to sit down and sit behind a desk and not move very much uh, for a long part of the day. So I suggest you go from kind of eight till 12, go 16 hours, 8 p.m. till 12 midday um, or, or an equivalent length of time um, without eating. And, I, and I, that's a discipline that I've got into. He, started, he suggested to me that I do two days a week and now I try to do every weekday. I do, I do eat breakfast at weekends when I'm out with the kids because usually I'm doing something active and that does require some calories. But um, in the week, I try to do it as often as I can, not eat breakfast. That's me. I, I feel, you know, it's difficult always to attribute cause and effect, isn't it? But I feel better for that. And it's definitely helped me, you know, manage, um, uh, you know, manage keeping my weight where I want to keep it. Um, so that's been that's been good. I try to get to the gym two or three times a week. I'm not always successful in that. But the other piece of advice the doctor gave me, which was really helpful, was he said, um, you know, at your age, at your age, he said, um, he asked me what I was doing for exercise. I said, I'll go to the gym three times a week. I do three lots of cardio. And I do one lot of resistance when I find a bit of time. And he said, right, stop that. You know, I'm approaching 50, Danny. And he said to me, you know, your age, you need to really work on your musculoskeletal health before you get so, you know, old, old enough that such to a point in, in life where you're too old to really do too much about it. He said, switch it around, do three lots of resistance and one lot of cardio. You don't need to do all the cardio that you're doing. Um, and I've done that and I feel better for it. Uh, I took his advice um, and, and switched things around. I'd love to say I get to the gym three times every week. That wouldn't be true. Uh, but I do try very hard to do it. I certainly try and get there twice. Um, so they're important disciplines to me, um, Danny. And I would also say, uh, you know, sport is an important part of my life. I try to get, you know, I go to the gym. I do play golf in a fairly stereotypical middle-aged man way. Um, and work, you know, working hard to to improve that and try and bring my handicap down. People that know me know I'm also an extremely passionate Nottingham Forest supporter. That that is an emotional roller coaster. It's not always good for my health necessarily to be a Nottingham Forest supporter, but certainly for the last 20 years, we're a little bit better now. Uh, but that, that's an important thing to me too. And I've got, and in the last few years, I've brought a new little discipline into my life. I try to learn some Spanish every day as a mental challenge, you know, not particularly because I'm actively using it, although I do have a Colombian friend in the 
in our office who talks to me, and that's good. And I, I do like that. She speaks to me in Spanish, which I find helpful. Um, that's a little discipline I've brought in. I use the Duolingo app. And I find that really good. Again, I don't achieve, always achieve every day, but that's a little discipline that I've tried to get into mentally for some stimulus um, in the evenings generally. And I, and I, uh, and I do enjoy that. Oh, look out. There might be an office, an RSM office in Ibiza then, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, but on your, on your fasting, I know we, we, we've discussed this. So just, mm. just let people know the time frame that you, that you fast, fast within, because I think that, that, that helps. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, I, I try to go, try and eat my evening meal by 8 or 9 p.m. And then, and then go 16 hours to lunchtime. Yeah, so, so to either to midday or 1 p.m. Uh, and I actually find, you know, um, I don't think it's as hard as people perhaps. At first, I thought this is going to be this is going to be terrible. I've eaten breakfast every day. All you know, I've gone to work. I've bought porridge and I've eaten cereal. And and um, you know, and I, I said to the doctor, you know, you you. Uh, but surely, you know, we we grow up learning hearing that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. How can I possibly skip breakfast? Um, that's a mantra that I've kind of lived by. And um, he said, well, yeah, that's very true. It is the most important meal of the day. If you're digging holes in the road or you have some other highly physical job, but you sit behind a desk, you don't need all those calories. And um, yeah, and, and I have found it's, you know, it's, it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Yes, you feel hungry, you know, late morning, but um, it's not, it's not too bad generally, I find. I'm not a zealot, you know, I'm not, I'm not kind of, because, you know, the purists would say, you can't have, you know, you should only drink black coffee and water. I do put a little bit of, you know, I do put milk in things and so on, which is probably against the rules, but it's only a small thing. Yeah, no, well, thank you, Mark, for that real, re real approach to it. And I think having that that time frame, that, you know, till 12 or one o'clock you fast, and then after eight o'clock you you don't eat again. And that's that's fasting for, for you most days per, per week. I think that's really, help, really, really helpful. And in terms of energy, and on, 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 on that, that leads me into my next next question. In in terms of burnout and, and stress, which you know can can creep up on on every everybody because we're all we're all human. So how do you avoid those neg negative personal experiences like stress or burnout? I think um, you know one of the changes I've made, Danny, in, in my life in the last few years, and and this is where there was a you know a, perhaps a positive repercussion from the pandemic um i think it's 2018 i think where you know, you know professional services the autumn period kind of the period from september through to christmas certainly going back pre-pandemic used to be a lot of nights out a lot of networking a lot of social events black tie dinners there'll be a complete succession of those things and um you know a bit of burning the candle at the both ends certainly a lot of you know, for me then a reasonable amount of alcohol consumption. Um, a lot of my drinking was social, uh, in in a you know related to related to work and events in the evening related to work. And the pandemic came along, and all that went away. And um, for me, that meant cutting. I, I cut down on drink quite a lot during the pandemic because those social events, social triggers that were leading me to have a drink, um, weren't there um you know my wife is pretty much teetotal so there wasn't a lot going on in the house to kind of encourage drinking and so i i, I cut down a lot and i've and i've tried to sustain that there aren't the events there used to be there are there are events in the evenings in in the autumn period particularly and other times of the year but not as many as there used to be uh so there isn't as much of those sorts of settings in which to drink but i, I found that was a real I found in that in that year in particular, in 2018, I had a particularly heavy kind of autumn period, lots of events. And I felt my Christmas really drained and really, you know, in terms of negative impacts and stress and feeling a bit anxious, um, that, that didn't help me that year particularly. And, and I think the changes I've made since, perhaps by, would I have made those changes in quite the way if the pandemic hadn't come along? Maybe not. But it did create, a, it created a scenario, a set of circumstances, which worked out well for me. Um, you know, they say, don't they, they I don't, don't know if you've heard it, but um, someone said this to me a while ago, and I thought it was quite good, that um, everyone came out of the pa out of the pandemic, either a, a drunk, a hunk, or a chunk. Um, <laughs> and um, 
you know, and, and you see some of that, I think, you know, there are lots of people who say, well, I, I start drinking more or I ate more or whatever. I found my solace in exercise. Um, so, yeah, I quite, I quite like that one. A chunk, a hunk or a dr- drunk. What would you what would you have said you came out of the pandemic as, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, let's say, I, well, I don't hopefully not drunk for the reasons just just um, just stated. Danny and um, um, yeah, the fasting helps with the chunk bit. So um, process of elimination, I guess. But I think there's so much in in that that hunk, and not just the physical, but it's the mental as well. The mental fitness, the physical, the physical fitness certainly helps the mental fitness for all the reasons that you've you've just said said to to Mark. You know, dialing down on on the alcohol because it's a chemical within within our within our body. So thank you for that. Really honest account of what what helps what helps you in avoiding stress and burnout I think that's going to be really really valuable and then taking a step back from all of this Mark the bigger picture is what what would you say we've looked at your, the point of your life um, and that that boils down to to your your family and being a being a really caring and yet powerful custodian for for their their enriched life but the bigger picture Mark what what does success look like to you um, I think, I think simplicity is important, uh, Danny. And I think, you know, contentment, realizing what, what is valuable in life and what makes you happy and content is really key. Um, I'm not someone who craves a lot of material possession, really. You know, I would say that I like, I like, um, experiences, you know, I like to do things, sporting experiences. I like um, to try new things. I like to, you know, spend my money in, in that direction and, and give the kids great experiences as well in, in life that I think will make them, you know, better people in the in the, in the long run. Um, being able to do that, that's success to me. Being able to, uh, you know, spend time broadening my experiences in life and trying to ensure that the, the family are, um the kids are energized and and succeeding and i'm doing the things that help them to grow academically that to me and as as individuals that's really important to me um and i think all the things that are important to me in, in life I, I i do like to i do like to where i can try and help in a broader way um one thing that's happened to me in the last couple of years danny i became a trustee of sport birmingham which is a charity that you know means a lot to me because it was uh, an ideal charity. Really, I was looking for a trustee role. I wanted to to broaden my outside interests outside of my my current role, and um, and I looked at one or two charities and opportunities they had to become a trustee. But then Sport Birmingham came along. It's a, it's a small charity. It's got income of about three million pounds at the moment per annum. Um, but it is a perfect combination for me. Two things I love: sport and Birmingham. Uh, and um, uh, a charity that's got great objectives and aims in life that really resonate with me because it's trying to enhance the life chances of people through 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 sport, particularly particularly youth. Using sport as getting people into sport, the disciplines of sport. I benefited massively from it when I was a when I was a kid growing up. I did a lot of sport, and and I found that you know the life lessons that you get from being part of teams or competing as an individual so valuable and I draw so much from that that trying to help others get those experiences people who perhaps don't have an easy route into that or aren't attracted by sport but but yet because they've not had the right opportunity that's something that I feel very passionately about and to play a part in helping uh, deliver that deliver what sport Birmingham is trying to achieve is you know to me that's that's valuable and, and that that constitutes success for me um, Gosh, Mark. Please, Sorry, yes, please. No, please, please. Um, you know, I, 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 but I'm a quite a competitive person generally. You know, that probably comes from the sport as well. Um, and, and you know, not to leave, not to leave my work and my, my day job out of it. You know, I'm, I'm, I, success to me is also, you know, achieving things at work. Um, work has always been a massively important part of my life. I enjoy work, uh, and and achieving. Um, you know, you, we did our we did our strengths profiles together, and you know, achiever is pretty high on my um, on my profile, Danny. And that 
attaining goals and, and succeeding in whatever setting is, is a really important part of my life. Gosh, Mark, what a wonderful, wonderful synopsis of of success. You know, what wonderful to hear so so much within that. And then when we move it, move move life forward. And I know you haven't got a crystal ball, nor nor have nor have I, but Elon Musk, from what he said this week, seems to think that he has. <laughs> um, AI will put us all out of jobs, is what he says. But what what does the future look like to you in five years with your vision for success and yet the challenges in the workplace, hy- hybrid, the men- mental health that we've we've touched on, you, you know, your children growing up in this ever-changing changing world? What does it look like to you in five years? Um, well, five years, um, yeah, it's a, it's a reasonable length of time, isn't it? What I would say looking back and lessons looking forward, Danny, variety has always been really important to me. I spent 20 years working for RSM and, um, you know, the day I walked into the business in, in almost exactly 20 years ago in, in 2003, um, I'd never thought I'd have spent 20 years there because I'd had, at that point in my career, I'd had two roles. I'd worked for Sainsbury's for three years and I'd worked for EY for three years and they'd both been great and I'd enjoyed those experiences very much. But um, I like change and I like doing different things and I thought, and I, and I wouldn't have thought that I'd be around for 20 years. But what RSM has given me is lots of different challenges, lots of different roles, lots of different opportunities over that time. I've moved around, worked in different parts of the country in different roles, running different things. And that's been fantastic. And I think looking ahead, um, I need that variety to continue and I need new, new challenges. So in the next five years, I think I will look to, you know, like I've done with taking on the role that I've got with Sport Birmingham and getting involved with the Chamber of Commerce in Birmingham, which I also did a few years ago. I think I will look to add other new interests and challenges i've got um some exciting change ahead in 2024 um personally in terms of in terms of again work content and really looking forward to that so work's really important i mean no rush to to slow down or you know or retire and not that was going to happen in five years anyway but you know that but um but enriching my work experience, getting getting new and new and valuable experiences that continue to help me learn and develop Danny really important to me um, you know, and in five years' time, my boys will still be young. Uh, they'll still only be 15 and 12 and um, you know, going through some really key times. And, yeah, I'm preparing them for what, as you just, as you just said, Danny, what is now a more complex world. You know, the world I, you know, grew up, growing up in the 1980s, life seemed far more simple, you know, kicking a ball around a field for weeks on end in the summer holidays versus all the plethora of, you know, distraction and devices and everything that goes with that connection to the internet and gaming and everything that goes along with it that makes life perhaps a bit you know different and puts different pressures on children these days um so helping support them um will remain really important for me getting the balance right between work and life uh outside of work will be will be crucial for me over that period Gosh, Mark, and I, I I love hearing that you said about about variety because I was at a meeting on on Monday and we were discussing about uncertain times and how do we lead in in these uncertain times and I, and and I just said. But it's all an uncertain time. The uncertain time just keeps coming. You know, when have we had a certain, a certain, certain time? And on that, with with life throwing these setbacks, these curveballs, whatever you want to call them, consistently. You know, I, I was listening to a leader speak um, last week from PwC, and he said he said every week this was a leader. He said every week there is something to get depressed about in the news. There is some. So, and I just thought that that was really humble of him to say that as a as a, as a leader. Um, because it, it it does life keeps knocking you, and so when life exacerbates you, you Mark, what is it that keeps you going? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I think that's very true, isn't it? It's very easy to get, um, especially you know, with all the things going on around the world at the moment, very easy to get um, uh, you know depressed or overwhelmed by it. Um, mm-hmm. um, I think we all need our escapism, don't we? And things to to fall into. And I thought I'd probably go back to things I've said earlier in the in the call. Um, Danny, you know, I, I uh, you know, family is a great pillar of support for me in that, spending time with the boys and, and doing things away from the day to day and getting down to, um, you, you know, some um, time spent with them, doing the things that they enjoy uh, is, is, is really important escapism for me. And I'd say, you know, individually, again, I, I draw on sport so often. That is a big part of my, it's always been a big part of my life, and I and I find that, you know, a, a place of refuge for me, either participating or watching. 
um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big part of who I am. Well, and I'm sorry that it's caused you an emotional roller coaster being Nottingham Forest. <laughs> <laughs> I blame my father. I blame my dad. He got me into it when I was a child, Daddy. I can't shake it off now. <laughs> and then bringing this, bringing this in, Mark, what three values would you say that you live by? And I ask this because, you know, when we're looking at the point of your life, that thing that keeps you anchored, what are the values that keep you rooted, rooted in that? Yeah, I would say, Danny, I got a bit of time to think about this before we spoke today. Um, I would say hard work. Hard work is really key. And as always, I'd like to think, you know, that's always sat very much. I don't, I'm not necessarily, I don't think I'm the most, necessarily the most talented uh, individual on earth um, in a lot of what I've done, but I have worked hard. And, and I think, you know, that's a crucial life lesson and one I'm trying to, you know, one I'm definitely trying to instill in my boys. Because um, it takes, you know, it takes you a long way. Unless you're very lucky in life, uh, then, then you know, you need that. Um, otherwise, um, you know, it, good things don't necessarily come unless you're prepared to go to push yourself and, and, and go above and beyond. Um, I would also say um, <clears throat> honesty. Reliability. I mean, that, 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 that's a real fundamental, um, you know, key cornerstone, really. And, and, I, and I kind of toyed with putting that one in the three or not, because I just think it's such a, it's so important to I know, so many of us, but without, without honesty, trust, reliability, fairness in the workplace, you know, pick any of those words really is that value. Um, you know, then, then, you know, you're completely undermined. So I think that's such a crucial foundation stone that you need to have um, in in life. And uh, thirdly, I would say my third value, again, perhaps playing to playing to my achiever and maximizer strengths, Danny. Um, excellence, I would say, you know, that that striving to produce the very best that you can. That's a really important value for me. That doesn't necessarily, and again, this perhaps you know, a conversation that I'm having with my eldest son at the moment. Excellence doesn't always mean perfection, you know, and and not getting ten out of ten in your spelling test every week, you know, that 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 might be accept, you know, that's acceptable. You don't have to get ten every week, and it's not the end of the world if you don't. Um, but uh, you know, striving to be the very best that you can and deliver excellence for in your work for the people you work with in my world for the clients that you work with is is really really important to me i know that mark and to verify not that i need to your honesty and, and reliability you know in, in growing and starting my business i know that you know and i so value you for this anything that you've said you'll do with my business has happened it's not been fluff or hot air or broken promises or balls kicked down the road it's it's you, you you live you do live those mark i'm i'm really really heartened to say and and indeed indeed know you and and just on the excellence one um as you as you know i worked on the olympic games and and their three um the olympic motto is three made up of three values which are friendship respect and excellence yes um, and I love that you also you, you also backed it up with the not not perfectionism because I think we all know when we strive for perfection that can lead to particularly in a workplace burnout and 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 stress. So I love what you said about your excellence, Mark. <clears throat> and with those, your hard work, honesty, or reliability, reliability and excellence. How do those keep you focused on living the point of your life? Um, well, I think you know, that that. That, there's something in there about setting standards, you know, so they help me, I think, uh, navigate and um, and, in, and in my purpose and my life focus of, of working to help the boys develop, as I, as I guess I already mentioned, Danny, trying to get them to um, see that these values can help make you are, are, are a foundation of success. Hard work, really important. You know, key time at school now, we're learning habits and behaviours that are going to stand them both in, 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 in good stead for the rest of their academic time until they're 18 and, and hopefully beyond. And um, 
working with them to see, as I say, that that, that excellence is really important, giving of your best, driving, um, working hard, putting the time and effort in, crucial behaviours, uh, those values link very neatly into that, that purpose and that direction in terms of trying to pass on what I've learned in respect to those values to the, you know, to my sons, Danny, is really, is really key to me. But I, I was also going to say, actually, in, in the values, I didn't include this in the end, but, and perhaps it's captured slightly different, separately, but I think it's really important not to forget to live life, to have fun, you know, and, and that's really important. Those, you know, those values are, all about you know putting in the effort and the quality and ensuring your outputs are great but i think you know you see so many lessons in life where um life can be cut short you can't always you know we can't, none of us can be sure about completely sure about tomorrow can we you know and and so making sure you get the balance right in terms of doing all the things to be successful and to lay great foundations for the future but recognizing that today is you know you can only live today and making sure that you invest the right amount of time and um, in enjoying today and, and taking some of the benefits of, the, of your labor and your, your efforts in the present is key because, um, yeah, you can't always be sure what tomorrow will look like. Yeah, quite. And, um, you know, for all those reasons that we, we talked talked about i truly believe that as as adults we we need to be intentional about having joy because you know the mental health pandemic is the net you know are we hybrid working you know what's what's happening there's you know, a lot of confusion out there and you don't need me to tell you what's been in the news news lately and i think as adults we definitely need to be intentional about about joy so i love that you said about um living life mark in amongst it all and i also knowing you love that you say to your children but e equally your team as well about setting standards raising raising the game i think i think that's that's exceptional and long may that last for you mark taylor thank you so we'll bring it into land here i have been delighted to be joined by you any final thoughts before we before we wrap it up wrap it up mark um no i've really enjoyed the conversation danny thank you for inviting me i've, I've yeah really enjoyed this morning and um yeah hopefully uh Hopefully the people who listen to this podcast can um, gain a little something from, from, from my messages. Certainly. I think you've given some, some incredibly valuable insights and tips and framings and, and, and techniques, Mark. And, you know, just to raise you up and thank you thanking you you navigate my work and work in da daily life and an exceptional leader thank you so much mark taylor we'll bring it into land thank you listeners 